Hey guys, welcome back. I'm Paintivity and I'm doing something a little bit different today. Looks kind of crazy, I guess, on the surface, but Cinderella Phenomenon, it is a, uh, like a novel. So, I don't really know what I'm getting into other than it's got ten different endings, tons of different people. Um, it looks really neat, almost in like a Kingdom Hearts kind of way with the mosaic uh, images. And so, you know, I figured it's going to be like some type of love story type drama, but um, let's see what happens. I've never actually done one of these, and it's new. Uh, we recommend viewing the tutorial. Um, sure, let's do it. Welcome to the tutorial. Quick run through the shortcuts and functions. Uh, click the space bar or enter. Should you miss a line or two while reading, you can always click the back button in the quick menu. It's located in the upper right hand corner. Good to know. Limited amount of lines you can roll back to when you use this function. Uh, shortcut is page up. And you can skip it if you've seen it. And that's control. So uh, auto forward mode. I don't know. Okay, which I saw the menu already. You can customize everything. You can have up to 72 save files. Also good to know. Um, but since I don't know how long the story is, so enjoy. It looks really cool. Once upon a time in a kingdom far, far away, there were two crystals. One was the Crystallum Lucis, protected by the ruler of the fairies. The other was the Crystallum Ten Tenenbrarum, which was watched over by the high leader of the witches. Fairies and witches, okay. The Lucis was sustained by love, happiness, and joy. The Ten Tenenbrarum, <laughs> I'm never going to get that right, uh, was fear, anger, and hatred. Sorry, choking over here. The fairies and witches lived in harmony with the humans of the kingdom. They regulated the powers of the crystals in order to maintain balance between darkness and light. For there can be no joy without sadness and no courage without fear. The kingdom was at peace for a time. Then one day, a traveling bard decided, decided to write stories, tales of the magic and wonders of the kingdom. He named these stories Fairy Tales. In fairy tales, the light always emerged victorious, and true love was a usual reward. That's how they normally go. Fairy tales spread further than can could have been pre pre predicted. Come on. <laughs> the humans of the kingdom began to believe that fairy tales were true, and that the magic of the witches was inherently wicked and cruel. The witches became hated and feared. So kind of like Salem, almost. Eventually, they were hunted like animals. The witch hunt. Okay? The high leader of the witches, in all of her anger, created the fairy tale curse. You think we're wicked? So be it. Just as you have taken our happily ever afters, we shall take yours. It's legit. The witches used the fairy tale curse to attack humans indiscriminately, ultimately throwing the kingdom into chaos and darkness. The ruler of the fairies, the Lucis Bearer, sought to regain peace. But the witches were blinded by their hatred for humans who were responsible for the witch genocide. A terrible war, the Great War, began. Man, this is pretty dark. Eventually, the Tenbrarum Bearer, the high leader of the witches, was finally defeated. Ah, the Tenbrarum was lost, peace was restored, and the light once again triumphed. Okay. But darkness can never fully disappear. I feel like we're getting like a Kingdom Hearts vibe out of this somehow. It waits in the shadows, patient for when its time, uh, for its time will in inevitably return. Oh god. I guess we're playing as Lucette. Really? Do I have to really do this? What am I doing? Eh. Why are you blinking at me? You're killing me here. There we go. Okay. So that was your backstory. Darkness versus light, good versus evil. Eh. No. Yes? Okay. Now, okay. Okay. <clears throat> I don't really have any progress yet. Q. 
can can we I don't want to do that yes I guess didn't really have much of a choice did I all right let's go right back into that can, can I thank you there we go okay there we go play as myself the prologue ice princess Ooh. my name is Paintivity Riel Britain daughter of King Gennaro Britain the third wow, I feel so fancy I am the crown princess of the kingdom of An Angeal at least that was who I used to be but that was before yesterday when I became a victim of the infamous fairy tale curse Whoa, this is cool looking. She's so pretty. Everyone has forgotten my birthright. Now, I'm nothing more than a lowly peasant. I feel like I'm stuck in a nightmare. But no, this is my reality now. I still have no idea what I must do to break the curse. I close my eyes and remember that day. It started out like any other day. Made a. Have you heard? Another person was cursed. Mm. I'm on my way to the dining hall for breakfast when I stop and listen to the sound of hushed voices. There are two maids standing next to each other with brooms in hand. With no eyes either, apparently. <laughs> These two are slacking off again. That's terrible. What fairy tale curse was it? They say it was Pinocchio. Oh. Pinocchio? The fairy tale with the lying boy whose nose grows longer? That's awful. You know, more and more people have been getting cursed lately. You think those wicked witches are up to something again? I thought the fairy tale curses would stop after you know who was defeated. You two were hired to work, not talk. It. <laughs> uh -oh, we're sorry, Your Highness. As can only be expected from the likes of them. Oh, she was kind of high and mighty. Another fairy tale curse. The fairy tale curse started spreading even before the Great War began. I do not have much interest in its effects, even now. After all, most humans probably deserve to get cursed. The victims are all weak. And jail would be better off without the dead weight. Wow. If it were up to Mother, the Cursed would have been banished from Angel the instant they fell prey to it. Wow. But Mother's not here anymore. And she will not come back. Ever. Princess? The King and Queen are waiting in the dining hall. I'm on my way. Gorgeous. The King, Ophelia, and Rod are all present in the dining hall. Someone is conspicuously missing, but I ignore their absence. King, what is it, King Gennaro? Good morning, Paintivity. Good morning, Your Majesty. Good morning, Paintivity. Uh, Paintivity? <laughs> Ophelia. I don't think we like her. Ophelia wins of, wins of. Every day I wonder why my father, the king, married a lowly baker. She can never be a true queen, for she pales in comparison to mother. I take my seat next to the king, then look up at the person sitting opposite me. This guy with a rabbit is so cute. Rod Benedict Widensov, my stepbrother, is bored and quiet, as usual. He's two years my junior, and is the younger of Ophelia's children. He's mute and uses a plush bunny to voice his thoughts. It was apparently given to him by a fairy. He minds his own business and is easy to deal with. But his older sister... My eyes go to the empty seat beside him. She's probably the most infuriating person I've ever had the displeasure of knowing. Oh god. I don't... Emmeline? I think? I'm so sorry I'm late. I was, I was reading and forgot the time. And here she is. Good morning, dear father, mother. Good morning, Rod. And good morning to you, too, Paintivity. It's a beautiful morning, isn't it? 
Mm. Emmeline Winsov, Rod's elder sister and my stepsister. She acts as if we are blood, as if she too were born a princess. And if she could be, be crowned princess, perhaps steal my place. I will never let that happen. Now that everyone's here, let us begin. Butlers glide inside with silver trays to carefully serve us breakfast. So, Emmeline, you were reading the fairy tale books that the king brought you? Oh, yes, there are so many, and they're all so wonderful. Thank you so much, Father. I'm happy that you like them. I love them. It's so strange that the library didn't have any of them to begin with. That is because Mother hated them. She had all the books burned. But why? They're such charming stories. Fairy tales mislead humans into believing they can have things they do not deserve. Fame, riches, love, happily ever afters. And when their wishes do not come to fruition exactly as they want them to, the humans blame the witches for granting them in the first place. What are you implying about witches, Paintivity? The atmosphere shifts, the air in the room growing heavy. I continue to eat. Perhaps witches are not responsible for the evil in this world. Perhaps humans are the cause of their own downfall. Have you any idea what you're talking about, child? Wow, this got heavy real quick. That's such a big thought. Like, you know, you want to believe in something, but you have to look at it and say, well, am I the root cause of this? Witches have caused nothing but pain and suffering to this kingdom. Even now, they still spread the fairy tale curse to our innocent subjects. The truth is, I know very little about the time the witches had free reign over Angeal. I was very young then, and Mother forbade me to leave this palace, sometimes even my room. I know nothing of the people's supposed pain and suffering. Mother kept me away from everyone, and so I cannot bring myself to care. How do you know the cursed are innocent? Our people have been toiling day and night to rebuild Angeal after the Great War. Our people are the kingdom's foundation, and I am endlessly grateful for their determination and resolve. Every day I wonder what your mother taught you about. Leave mother out of this. Dear, please. Paintivity, darling, your father didn't mean to. I am not one of your children, Ophelia. I do not need your sympathy. I... Paintivity, you will show your mother respect. She is not my mother. I set down my fork and knife and stand up. I'm done. Excuse me. My father and I have never got on, but our relationship has significantly worsened since he married the baker. My father, the king, it has been 17 years and I have never felt any love from him. He treats Emmeline and Rod, who only entered our lives one year ago, like his own children, better than he's ever treated me. This has been my life ever since mother passed away four years ago. Mother was the only one that was there for me when no one else was. If it wasn't for the accident during the Great War, she'd still be here. Oh, some random man's talking. Why the sour face so early in the morning, princess? And who are you? Everybody's got yellow eyes. They're like cats. His name is Man. It's just gonna be Man. Let me guess. It's the King, the Queen, or Princess Emmeline. Or is it all of them? I ignore his question. Fritz, what are you doing here so early? I'm running some errands for my father. Fritz Gerald Aiden Leverton, son of the highest knight of the Order of Chaldea Chaldera? His father, Sir Alcaster, has served the royal family for many years. Sir Alcaster is one of the king's most trusted advisors. Three years ago, Fritz was assigned the honor of becoming my personal knight. His presence is the only company I can tolerate nowadays. You should wait in the throne, throne room then. Thank you. Not too shabby looking. Princess? Yes. You know, I haven't seen you smile once since I met you. 
Why is that of any importance? Still, I do hope to see you smile one day, princess. Well, I won't take up more of your time. I'll see you at ten. Ten? Don't tell me you've forgotten. Forgotten what? You're going to town today, remember? I deflate as a realization dawns upon me. It's been two days since the king issued the order. Hmm. Paintivity, I would like you to accompany Emmeline on one of her town outings. Surely you could send maids with her instead. I would not have requested you to accompany her if I was going to send her with her maids. I want you to make an effort to get along with your sister. Stepsister. She is your sister and you will treat her and Rod as if they were of your blood. Two days from now you're going to accompany Emmeline outside. It's been four years since you left, last left the palace. Ever since then you've locked yourself away. You barely leave your room. Angeal was in the grip of war back then, but now the kingdom is safe and back to its former glory. I want you to see how beautiful Angeal really is. Paintivity, a princess must know her kingdom. Go with Emmeline and she will show you the town that you only ever see through your windows. Yeah, she looks a little offended. Is that an order? If it needs to be. Are we clear? I'm going to take that as a yes. <laughs> Paintivity? Understood. The last time I left the palace was four years ago when the king took me with him to check on the people after the Great War had ended. I shake my head, removing myself from the memory. I am safe here. Princess? Are you alright? It won't be that bad. The townsfolk are good people. How can you be so sure? Times have changed. People change. That is precisely the problem. Mother never changed. Mother loved me until the end. Sometimes change is for the better, Princess. I think you'll see that today. If you'll excuse me, I shall see you later. Kadunk, kadunk, kadunk. Oh, who is this? Dolora? Do you think witches are capable of bringing back the dead? Huh. I wish you could talk to me, you and the others. I wonder if she's a doll. Yeah, my dolls are my only friends. They're the only ones I can trust. Unlike humans, they will never betray me. They'll never hurt me. They'll always be there for me. The moment I saw Dolora, I knew she was special. She was different, so elegant and realistic, it was almost as if she was breathing. She was a gift from the king on my 17th birthday. I only started receiving dolls from him when mother passed away. Mother does not believe in birthday celebrations. But every year at midnight, a letter would appear under my door. It would contain instructions leading me through the palace on an adventure to a room filled with gifts, cakes, and sweets. A child's dream. I'd been fascinated by the dolls, which had always held a little greeting card. A card with the words, I love you on it, signed by M. The card would tell me to keep those celebrations a special secret, but I didn't need to be told that. Mother always found a way to show me she still cared. In her own way. The secret celebrations had stopped as soon as she had disappeared. Yes? Excuse me, your highness. The king has requested your presence. This better not be another lecture. Tell him I'm on my way. I'll see you later, Dolora. Not like we're expecting her to talk back. That'd be a little strange. Oh! Good morning, your highness. Sir Mithros. Sir Mithros, the royal advisor. Father trusts him a great deal, just like he does Sir Alcaster. Every day you look more and more like your mother. I sometimes find Sir Mithros talking to mother's portrait when he thinks no one's looking. He must have admired her a lot, but I cannot bring myself to think highly of him. There's something about him that puts me on edge. It's probably those bangs. Are you on your way to see the king? I, sh I shall not keep you then. Until our next meeting, dear princess. Okay. Random. Your majesty. 
Paintivity, are you ready? Oh. <laughs> You'll enjoy this, Paintivity. I've heard the toy shop has lovely dolls. This will be good for you. You'll get to know your sister better, and you'll be able to interact with and learn about the people of Angeal, about our subjects. I will not learn anything I do not already know. Sounds like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Like, she expects it to be bad, so therefore it is bad. Like, or it will be. Why do you always believe the people around you are incapable of good? Because I've seen how quickly people will betray and manipulate each other to get what they want. Mother warned me about human nature. You do not see clearly, Paintivity. If you would only open your eyes, you'd be able to see how good people really are. I believe I am already quite capable of seeing the true nature of people. After all, I have seen that there is no good in you. Ow. That is rude. Paintivity, I... Where were you when I needed you four years ago? Where have you been ever since? Back then, I'd been overflowing with grief and pain. I'd just lost Mother, my entire world. I'd hoped that maybe, uh, maybe then he would have shown me love and compassion. Even just a hug to let me know someone was there. It had been a childish hope. childish hope. I had been left alone. I did not see him for months, had barely even heard his voice. You cannot rely on anyone but yourself. You cannot trust anyone but yourself. This is what you have taught me. Your Majesty. I know that I've hurt you. I know that there's nothing I can do to atone for what I did. But please, Ophelia and her children are not a part of that. They do not deserve to be hated. In the end, they still matter more to him than I ever did. Paintivity. Enough. I have already said I will go. Everyone's waiting outside. I shudder at the thought of leaving the palace after so many years. Paintivity, it'll be okay. How can you be so sure? She's terrified. It's kind of like a uh, tangled. Just, she's terrified. Thank you for agreeing to accompany Emmeline. I would not disobey an order from the king. Excuse me. Interesting. Ooh. Girl. Hello, how can I help? Viorica? Emmeline, I mean, Princess Emmeline, how good to see you. I trail Emmeline, ignoring her as she embraces her friend. I glance around the small shop. The dolls displayed are nowhere near the quality of the ones in my room. I cannot understand why Emmeline insisted she buy gifts for her friends here. I cannot believe I'm outside the palace. There's no need to be so tense, Princess. I would never let anything happen to you. Your only job is to relax and enjoy yourself. You ask the impossible of me. There's no need to be formal, Viorica. I'm still the same as I was. Oh, yes, Rod's come along as well. It's been a while, Viorica. It's good to see you again too, Rod. And I must introduce you to Her Highness, the Crown Princess Paintivity. <laughs> the look on Viorca's face as she takes a step back from me is all too familiar. Fear. My apologies for being so rude, Your Highness. Good morning. Um. <laughs> Guess we don't feel like talking, Emmeline. Uh, uh huh. And this is Sir Fritch. Gerald, Sir Alcaster's son. It's a pleasure to meet you, my lady. Oh, you're Sir Fitzgerald? You really are as handsome as Emmeline described in her letters. I, I, I'm sorry? <laughs> P please, don't mind her, Sir Fitzgerald. <laughs> I'm sorry, Emmeline. Right. And she's laughing. <laughs> So, uh, what brings you all the way here? Oh, I'm here to get some toys. Gifts for some new friends. Toys from here? Are you sure? Of course I am. I cross my arms. I would prefer we finish this errand as quickly as possible. 
Y yes, of course. I'm sorry, Your Highness. It Rod's pissed. Princess? I can barely breathe in here. I just want to get back to the palace. And who is this? Is this mom? Or what was mom? Or a doll? Beautiful lady. Good morning. Everybody's confused. Up until this point, I had always considered mother to be the fairest beauty in the land. The lady that walks in proves me wrong. Her beauty's mesmerizing and clearly without peer. Everyone in the shop is openly staring. Oh, you're early today, ma'am. I have some important errands to run later today. Are the items ready now? Oh, of course. Let me go and fetch them for you. I'll just be a moment, Emmeline. Why is she smiling at me? Here you are, ma'am. Thank you. Ah, oh, that lady was beautiful. Right? Any girl standing next to her becomes hopelessly ugly by comparison. I must be a potato then. Who is she? She's new around town. Some say she's a fairy. A fairy? Fairies had saved Angeo from the witches four years ago. Everyone considered them our saviors. And yet the fairies are still unable to stop the fairy tale curse from spreading. Here you go. Thank you so much. No, thank you, Viorca. I hope to drop by again soon. Good, I'll look forward to seeing you again. I hope to see you again soon as well, Rod. Likewise. Huh. Leaving the palace was a bad idea. While I'm out, I am the center of attention. Some townsfolk point and stare at me. Most, however, make a point of avoiding me. Like I'm the plague. There are some spiteful stares, but thankfully none are nearly as intense as they were four years ago. I'm sure the townsfolk are only surprised to see you again after so many years. Right. Fritz and Rod lag behind us, which leaves only Emmeline walking beside me. I cannot decide which is worse. The staring or her company. Oh, Paintivity, look! A street performance. It's been so long since I watched one. Street performance? I feel like she's got this, like, raven vibe to her. Good day, everyone. My name is Waltz, and I'm here to spread some happiness and magic. The boy named Waltz snaps his fingers and colorful flower petals start to rain down from the sky. Isn't that pretty, Paintivity? Mm. And are those the princesses over there? It's an honor to have you in attendance. Please accept this humble gift. He snaps his fingers and white lilies appear in his hand. Cool. Oh, thank you. Eh. <laughs> the boy looks at me as if expecting some kind of reaction. When he gets nothing from me, he sighs and gives me a wry smile. I hope to see you again during my next show. We'll definitely try. He gracefully bows before moving back into his area to perform more magic tricks for the gathering crowd. There are performers like this all around, Angel. I love them. Maybe someday we'll get to see some musicians, too. Those are my favorite. I do not intend to leave the palace again. But you don't like it out here? Rod and I grew up here. I love Angel, and this is my favorite part of the kingdom. I wanted to share this with you, Paintivity. I know you didn't really want to come, but you still tagged along. That means a lot to me, so thank you. I did not do this for you. I'm only here because the king ordered me to go with you. Good job on bursting her bubble. How mean. I just want us to be closer, Paintivity. I would like to try and be your friend. I do not want or need your friendship. No matter how you act around me, we are not, and never will be, sisters. I'd take care to remember that if I were you. Man, she's like extra depressed. But I... Rod suddenly grabs my hand, pulling me away from Emmeline. 
Stop. He's staring daggers at me. I think this is the first time I've ever seen him angry. Rod, don't. Let me go. Both of you ought to stay away from me. I feel the heavy atmosphere as I turn to look at the people staring at us. Their expressions mirror the looks of disdain I saw years ago. Anger. Disgust. Hatred. I begin to walk away. Princess, wait. Don't follow me. Princess. She's gonna get in trouble. I adjust my cloak, making sure my face is hidden from view. I never should have left the palace. As I walk around, I watch the people bumbling down the streets. So carefree. They work so hard for so little reward. They could work their entire lives and never have a fraction of what I have. And yet, they're happy. And I... I heard Anise lost her job at the palace. It's true, Crown Princess Paintivity made sure the poor girl was fired. I stop in my tracks at the mention of my name. Not again. Anise? Was that the name of that one maid that tore Dolores' dress? If so, my decision to fire her was justified. A palace maid cannot be clumsy. Why should I tolerate poor performance? What did I do that was so wrong? I know that Anise, hardworking and big-hearted, very good with medicine. Shame she lost her job so quickly. You know how hard the crown princess is to please. My friend at the palace says she doesn't even smile, only goes around with that cold look on her face. That's probably why they call her the Ice Princess. Ice Princess? So all those times I heard the servants saying that, I'd always suspected they were talking about me. She's the complete opposite of our Princess Emmeline. That's, that child's an angel. We all know she could be crown princess. Annoyance begins to simmer inside me. I cannot stand hearing any more, so I walk away. Ever since Emmeline entered my life, I'm always being compared to her. And now I've become second best. I am Paintivity Riel Britton, daughter of King Gennaro Britton III and the crown princess of the kingdom of Angeal. I am of royal blood. She's... She's nothing. There you are. Princess, you must come back with me. It's getting too late for you to remain outside. Princess? Are you alright? Are you hurt? I brush him off and turn away. No need to fuss. Let us return to the palace. I'm wondering where the stopping point would be. Leaving the palace was physically and mentally draining. My bed is welcoming to my unusually heavy body. I turn my head and meet Dolores' glassy gaze from where she sits on my shelf. I left the palace today, Dolora. It was the same as all those years ago. Everyone looked at me like I was... What have I ever done to deserve those looks? How can I be so hated? Ice Princess. I wish Mother was here. I look at the smiling faces of my dolls. At least I still have all of you. I yawn and stretch my arms. Good night, Dolora. Ooh, voice. <laughs> twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Singing? But who? Up above, the world so high, like a diamond in the sky. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. I blink my eyes open, only to see Dolores sitting right in front of me on my bed. Moonlight spills across her delicate features. How I wonder what you are. Wasn't she on the shelf with all the other dolls when I went to bed? D Dolora? It's almost time. I pinch my cheeks to make sure I'm not dreaming. It hurts. Only ten minutes before the clock strikes twelve. Whoa. That's awesome. I hope you're ready, princess. What? My doll just turned into a human? How? Who are you? You know who I am. I've been watching you since the day your father gave me to you. What is happening? I don't think I've ever been so confused in my life. 
All the answers will come with time, but right now I'm here to give you something, princess. A freaking curse. Rude. A shoe? <laughs> Is this Cinderella's very own glass slipper? It's beautiful. Too beautiful. Then a realization begins to dawn upon me. You're a witch. Smart girl. I knew you'd figure that out eventually. Now it's time to say goodbye to your precious crown. What? Oh man, sweet dreams. Cinderella. Rude. Well, I think we found our stopping point. So, okay, I'm going to stop here where she's like, hey. So we know that now she's been officially cursed and that was... Um, her backstory so I don't know I, I read kinda of fast but um, I'm enjoying the story so far I like how they're adding in like the fairy tales plus you know just kinda of day-to-day life but you've got like the hierarchy and all of that and um, I, I thought it would be hard to switch between the characters which I'm not good at doing voices for anyway but um, I really like it. It's really cool. So uh, if you guys like it, go ahead and hit the like button. I'll I'll be continuing this because I, I do want to see what ending we get eventually. So hopefully you guys hung in there long enough to watch it. And, uh, I, you know, I always appreciate that. So if you have something to say, go ahead and leave it for me. And uh, if you have any thoughts or just anything about the game, uh, let me know. It is on Steam for free, so you can go check it out and I'll leave the information. Um, but as always, thanks for joining the universe and we'll continue. Come on. So she's really upset. A hundred. That's it? Wow. I'll be fine.